All right, guys, the Duelist Cup is back with Sprite running around absolutely everywhere. I think the perfect control deck to play right now is the Kairu Shin Control, Legendary Ocean. Sprite is absolutely everywhere. Rikos is everywhere. We've got so many different strong decks, but this deck is actually really powerful. I have a really cool synchro version. Uh, just to show you some of the match history here, I haven't lost since I started playing. I'm 7-0, and and I thought, finally, I have to show you guys some of the replays. So let's see the replays. Deck profile will be at the end. All right, here we've got our first replay. Hand is a little bit awkward, but uh, we lose the coin flip, so of course they're going to go first. They're playing sprites. They have a sprite starter. Sprite starter by itself is full combo, depending on which version they're playing. If they're ver playing the version I have on the channel, then they should end on IP, Appaloosa, uh, Sprite, Red, like a variety of things. But depending on which direction they take, not every sprite player uh, plays exactly the same. Some people play a little more of a control variant. I don't know what they're going to do personally. As you can see, they go into the gigantic sprite. We can speed a little bit through this because I'm sure we have all uh, seen this <laughs> to, to uh, at nauseum at this point. They're not playing any of the frogs, but they end on basically... Uh, they end on more back row than I'm usually comfortable with. They end on sprite elf with the sprite red. This is, uh, what is this? Monster negate? Yeah, monster negate, sprite red, sprite elf, which will revive any one of these. And then they've got back row. I think Sprite Smashers was added in some part of that. I don't know. But our hand isn't terrible. We're going to activate Legendary Ocean. Our opponent's going to trigger the Sprite Elf right away. What made them do this? I don't know. They're going to activate Sprite to some special summon a Sprite Monster from their deck. Again, sometimes I just don't understand why people shotgun certain things. Uh, but they're, they're going to do that to get a carrot on board. Probably because they're expecting a bunch of like back row to be activated so they can... Uh, negate it so they have a monster gate and a spawn trap corner gate but we're just going to normal summon the kairu shin kairu shin has an effect that uh whenever he uh, basically as soon as kairu shin hits the board our opponent has to get rid of everything on the board it's not an activated effect it's like a uh, a continuous kind of like a goes in match uh, they have to get rid of everything until they control one non-water monster uh, which is really cool our opponent is gonna as you saw there max c immediately which doesn't I don't know why they decided to max E because this is my la this is my normal summon. I'm not going to special summon anymore. Uh, they're going to imperm the search of the Kairu Shin, but it doesn't matter. We broke their board and we locked them into whatever they have left, which is pretty cool. They're going to imperm that. Um, unfortunately, Sea Stealth 2 doesn't protect from targeting protection of spawn trap cards. They're going to banish both our monster and their monster, which isn't like the best thing ever. Uh, we're going to set three pass. Our back row is pretty good. We have the Dark Reef, we have Sea Stealth, and we have Ice Barrier. Uh, three good cards. They're going to normal summon. Uh, we're going to try to get rid of the Legendary Ocean. Of course they draw Ash Blossom for turn. Of course they draw it for turn. Uh, we're going to see Stealth to get it back. The um, Legendary Ocean, we're just going to get it back. Just because I, I sometimes when the game prompts me to activate things too much, I just, just activate it right away. And then uh, they're going to go into probably the Sprite Elf here would be a smart play. Yeah, they're going to go into Sprite Elf and start comboing off again. We don't have like a ton of interruptions. The only thing we have is Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier actually does serve as an interruption. Uh, they're going to go into that. Then they're going to search out the Carrot. So they're going to get Carrot. Uh, we're going to let the attacks go through and we're just going to save it for the last attack because we want to negate the Elf because Ice Barrier is a permanent negate. Uh, they're going to tribute to negate that effect, which is completely fine uh, because we really only actually only cared about the second effect of ice barrier in the first place so we're going to activate the second effect of ice barrier in order to search a kairu shin to our hand and we're going to definitely go ahead and out that whenever we can he's going to stay kind of in the sprite area if i was him i probably would have made a nightmare unicorn here um, and i'm sorry yeah nightmare yeah nightmare unicorn or um, instead of the nightmare unicorn just uh the one that pops spawns on trap cards probably would try to get rid of some of them. Uh, he's going to summon that. We're going to immediately go into the Ocean Lord. Uh, he is playing the Tri Brigade Sprite, which is a little more threatening than uh, certain other version sprites because they can go into the uh, the entire like line with the yeah they're going to go they can go into the uh, Tri Brigade line, which can non-target banish. We're going to attack Sea Stealth. Stealth is automatically going to destroy his card, and we actually drew pretty well. We drew. There can only be one, and we have Kairu Shin's Reef, so it doesn't matter which direction he goes, he's kind of stuck. Uh, we're going to Kairu Shin's Reef immediately to get rid of the uh, Legendary Ocean to summon another Kairu Shin, and the one that 
uh, this one right here, we're going to banish it, the tuner monster, and we've got the electric jellyfish just in case he wanted to activate the Karaz to special summon the, uh, just in case he wanted the special summon. So if he had a way to get rid of the ocean dragon lord, we had the, he had, we had the electric jellyfish to basically negate the Karaz anyway, uh, but he's locked into one non-water. He's going to go to our turn. Uh, we, we are going to attempt to like go to battle phase and combo off, but he's just going to scoop anyway. So yeah, this deck can really actually break boards pretty well. Uh, that's replay number one. All right, this is another replay here. Uh, this is basically another, I believe we lose the coin flip again. Yeah, we lose our coin flip again. Uh, they summon Divine or the Herald. I don't really play any hand traps because I prefer to just deal with their board, but I realize very quickly that they're playing the uh, runic, kind of like a, a runic what would you call it, like a control deck out your opponent sort of runic deck. Uh, but they're going to be playing that version. They're going to, they're playing the runic cards with the new um, Agito, or what is this, the, the Ishizu card. So their entire point is to deck out. They're going to basically end on the Supreme Sword Soul, which is pretty good because every time our cards get banished, you can banish a card on the field and in the graveyard. Uh, the Our hand is pretty awkward. We've got a couple of bricks, but it's not the end of the world. They're going to immediately shotgun stuff, which is actually not very smart. Uh, they should have saved these interruptions for later. Uh, they're going to start milling our stuff. We're going to send Ice Barrier. We're going to... Uh, they want to just prompt immediately the Runic Fountain as quick as possible. Maybe they're afraid of something. Uh, we're going to banish the Ice Barrier while we still have nothing on the board committed so that they can't banish anything with the Sword Soul Chen Yang. And then we're going to search our Kaiju. I love being able to search a Kaiju in this deck. You can out basically anything. Now we're going to Kaiju them immediately because that Sword Soul, number one, it's a water. And number two, it's actually really, really tough to deal with because every time a card is banished, they can banish a card in the graveyard. If you try to destroy it, they can basically banish to protect it. Like that card is actually really tough to out sometimes. Now we're going to Prosperity just for three uh, because we really don't need much in our hand. Our hand's decent. Um, we, in, we get to see stealth, which is fine. Uh, we didn't get to Kairu Shin, but it's not the end of the world. They're going to randomly banish the Legendary Ocean, which really sucks for us because it puts us in an awkward place. Uh, but fortunately, we're playing against Runic, and Runic doesn't OTK us. They're, they're going to, no matter what, this is a great thing about Runic. Like, they're annoying, but they'll never OTK. They can't beat you any faster than they already beat you, uh, which is actually quite beneficial. We're going to see stealth uh, to get back our Legendary Ocean. They're going to actually banish our Legendary Ocean, and this is why I kind of like playing, not banish it, they're going to shuffle it back into the deck, and this is why I kind of prefer playing in the Duelist Cup, because sometimes you can actually get like higher skill players, like maybe a person in regular ladder wouldn't have been able to do that, wouldn't be smart enough to do that, but this person has actually made some quite smart plays, they've shuffled back our cards, they've known enough what what our cards do. Uh, we're going to draw a Legendary Ocean, and now we're going to activate the Kairu Shen's Reef, uh, which we did have in the first opening hand here. Uh, we're going to summon the jellyfish and we're going to summon uh, not only the jellyfish but we're also going to summon the tuner and we're also going to summon the ocean dragon lord uh, which is going to not be active yet but now that we activate the card that counts as umi we can go into our synchro plays and this is why i play him he's the the normal monster of choice is because you can go into a lot of different synchro monsters you can go into dragite uh, you can go into White Aura Whale, which is actually really good. Really good because as soon as you summon, you destroy all your opponent's attack position monsters. He attacks twice on monsters. He does piercing. He comes back when your opponent destroys him. Like, this is really good. You have access to this. And you have access to Drag Eye, which is Spell and Trap Card Negate. This is very good against decks like Runic because, obviously, they need a lot of Spell and Trap Card activations. That's why I prefer to have this because you have access to not only the Rank 4 package, which is pretty good. You've got the uh, Stealth Kraken and you've got the Super Quantum, depending on what your level is. And then, of course, the White Dolphin, depending on what your level is. You have access to all of that stuff, but on top of having access to all of those effects, you also have access to... Um, yeah, you have access to the Synchros, and you have the access to the XYZ plays, which is why I play this thing over, uh, like, the Giga, Gigo Monster, and I play it over some of the other cards. I think just overall, it's it's probably a little bit more consistent. It, it, it raises the ceiling. It's not that it's more consistent, it just raises the ceiling. Uh, we're going to activate Sea Stealth to bring back, Sea Stealth 2 to bring back Ocean Dragonlord. We're going to activate the... Sea Stealth to banish it so that in the end phase we get it back instead of it getting destroyed by the effect of the uh, Sea Stealth too. Basically, it's a nice little cheat. 
Uh, he's gonna activate effects, but as long it doesn't really matter because we have two negates a turn of spawn trap cards. We have the Dragite and we have the Jellyfish. So every turn we can negate twice, which is really strong against back row decks. At this point, there's really not much that he can do because again, during his turn and during our turn, we can negate the Runic Fountain and we can negate the uh, the Dragite. We're going to activate again to get a Dark Reef just in case we have to go into the grind game. Uh, this, like I said before, it's not, they can't really do anything. We actually have all three copies of our Ocean Dragon Lords, and now we're just going to continuously attack him here. Uh, I don't think we have enough, yeah, we don't have enough damage to game him yet, but again, it doesn't matter because we literally have two Spawn Trap Card Negates per turn, uh, one of which destroys, the other one just negates. So this, if we negate the Field Spell, it just ends everything. He's going to activate that to, to put things back, and I'm going to allow him because that doesn't help anything. He's going to end phase here, and I, I believe this is just going to be the game. We're going to go to battle phase and attack. Uh, not to waste any time. Yep. Again, he only has two cards in his hand. We can just negate both of them with these two. Uh, really, really cool uh, game there. Even against a toxic deck, even going second, whatever, whatever you call it, uh, we still did quite well there. All right, now we've got the third replay. Unfortunately, this one's not in the Duelist Cup. I had to go out real quick and get another replay because I wanted to do three replays. But uh, for some reason, they actually. Uh, the footage actually like deletes itself and you can't view it after a while. This is another game we just played. This one we're actually going first. We do get max seed and we are playing, uh, our, our hand is a little awkward. We don't have access to Legendary Ocean, but we can get access to Legendary Ocean through uh, the Jellyfish. Uh, we are going to get max seed on the Jellyfish, which is going to prevent us from going any further. I would have possibly gone into uh, the... A stealth Kraken, because Stealth Kraken is actually kind of good. Again, it would lock our opponent, it make all of their monsters water, and then we can quick effect destroy one. Uh, but honestly, the Electric Jellyfish is pretty good because it is also in a gate. Uh, we're going to see Stealth to get back our uh, the Goat, which is their Legendary Ocean. Uh, we can get it back onto the field. So now we have a, a pretty decent situation here. We've got one spawn trap card in a gate. It's not like the best. We have our interruption from the Doom Kraken. Uh, we can banish to protect our back row and we have the ice barrier so we don't have like the best setup but we have like three like three three interruptions plus spawn trap card protection it's not the best and we're playing against despia despia as you know has a bunch of like interruptions uh, they can play through almost anything as long as it's not basic as long as it's not rivalry despia can pretty much play through every single floodgate interruption in the game they're going to go for this uh, the Branded Fusion, I have to negate that. That is the most important card to negate uh, is Branded Fusion because Branded Fusion is like a plus four. You have to negate that. Whether you have Ash, whether you have a negate, you must negate Branded Fusion. Always hold for negate. Hold, always hold your negate for Branded Fusion. Uh, they're going to fuse. They're going to make a hard fusion into uh, Quadrilantis, which is fine. He's the one that floats and can make your monster zero. I'm going to activate Ice Barrier. Uh, two monsters that are zero attack cannot destroy each other, so they're both going to stay around on the field. Uh, we're going to banish the Ice Barrier in the same turn to add our uh, Ocean Dragon Lord uh, to our hand. Again, it's a really cool kind of like mechanic. Uh, uh, so now we are going to activate Doom Kraken. Uh, the reason I want to destroy the Quadrilantis uh, is because it's negated and it's... Uh, number one, it's negated, and number two, it's... Not only is this card negated, but it's also a zero attack. We want to destroy it in the main phase. Permanently negated, permanently zero attack. We want to destroy it in the main phase because if you destroy it by battle, the electric jellyfish unfortunately cannot. Uh, the electric jellyfish unfortunately cannot activate in the damage step because it doesn't negate an activation. It only negates the effect. So if I was to run this monster over with an electric jellyfish, I couldn't negate its floating effect, which I. Which is down here and i don't want them to float so i'm going to main phase use doom kraken to pop it uh that way we can uh, return a jellyfish pop it with doom kraken and we can negate their floating effect that's in the graveyard uh, so we're going to summon it pop it they're going to attempt to summon from the deck and uh, activate the second effect to negate the jellyfish with the aluber i didn't even think about that uh, and then we're going to negate that so we're going to negate the aluber right there and then the quadrilantis will summon out the uh, uh, Dramaturge, which I don't really care about the Dramaturge. I didn't want him to get extra bodies on board. I was thinking he would actually go into something else, but he ended up going into the Dramaturge, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we summon the Kairu Shin. We're going to search the Dark Reef. We're going to attack. It's going to automatically get destroyed by Sea Stealth, and we're going to get in for three different attacks, uh, which is pretty awesome. And now we have a Negate, and we have the 
uh, Kairu Shin on board. We're going to end our turn here. Again, this is a pretty tough board to break because you have to deal with so many different things. Uh, they're going to activate the Fright for Fusion. We're okay with that. We're going to allow them to do that. Uh, yeah, let them search whatever they need to search. Uh, they're going to activate the Polymerization. I'm a little afraid of this depending on what they go into, so I'm going to go ahead and negate that because what are the chances that they have branded fusion in their in their hand what's the chances that they drew that card of course they drew that card uh so they activate that even though they didn't search or, any, or anything they're going to go directly into an albion i don't know why they do this because kairu shin's on board uh they activate the effect and they scoop immediately so what happens here is they can't go into mirror jade because mirror jade's not a, a water monster so that means that they probably had mud dragon in their extra deck mud dragon is a water monster so they were going to fuse something in their graveyard plus that monster to go into mud dragon which would have been a fat l uh, they realized that and instantly surrendered uh but uh, those are the three replays that I have that I can show you because the other ones somehow won't allow me to show you. Uh, let's go to the deck profile. All right, let's get to this. Uh, let's get to this undefeated, uh, undefeated Duelist Cup deck. Undefeated so far, of course. So we're gonna go to the deck edit here. This is what we're playing. We're playing uh, the Kairu Shin deck. Uh, we're playing. This is our only normal monster. You summon it for free, basically, off of the. Fish sonar. If you have legendary, if you have legendary ocean in the field, you get to summon it for free, or you can summon it off of Kairu Shin's Reef. If your opponent controls a monster when you activate the card, you basically get to summon this for free. The only reason I play that this one is because it's a tuner. I wish it was not a pendulum monster. Unfortunately, since it's a pendulum monster, when it leaves the field, it goes to the top of your extra deck. Uh, the frustration with that is that since it goes to the top of your extra deck, you can't recur it over and over. Uh, like if you had Kairu Shin's Dark Reef, uh, you would be able to recur it. If you had Sea Stealth 2, you'd be able to summon it during the battle phase. But unfortunately, since it is a just super randomly, just it just so happens to also be a tuner and a pendulum, it leaves technically. And that's really the only drawback to this card. Uh, one of the pluses, though, is that you can actually banish it off a of Pot of Prosperity or Pot of Extravagance from your extra deck. Uh, to draw cards or to uh, look at the top cards of your deck. So it, this is drawbacks and pluses. Again, it gives you access to White Aura Whale, White Aura Dolphin, and uh, the Dragite, which Dragite is really good um, since Dragite basically is a spawn trap card in gate. Uh, next we play the Maiden in the Aqua. She's another kind of like necessary brick. Sometimes you actually have to go into her uh, because she's... Uh, sometimes you, you don't have too many too much different access to Kairushin's Reef. Uh, no, too much different access to Legendary Ocean, so you Kairu Shin's Reef, get rid of your Legendary Ocean, then you can summon Maiden in the Aqua plus a uh, Ocean Dragon Lord, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, you can do that and then lock your opponent out, out of the game immediately. Uh, Warrior of Atlantis, very good card, such as Legendary Ocean. My only problem with this card is that it says Legendary Ocean and not Umi, and therefore we can't summon it off of Sea Stealth, we can't... Uh, search it off of the fish sonar like that's the only problem with this card it says legendary ocean instead of umi and this card always counts as umi so it's kind of like a weird like almost like this card really needs an errata like it, it's just absolutely incorrect this card should say discard this card add a um, umi to your hand because technically speaking legendary ocean doesn't even exist it's not a real card because it's always umi anyway uh, so it's kind of like a, a weird situation this card should like i said should search umi uh, we play one copy of Doom Crack, and this card's like kind of like a necessary brick. Like if you draw it, it's not it's not like a bad card, but it's it's one you basically want to search for free. Uh, then we play, and it blocks attacks and basically quick effect can return a water monster and pop a card to your opponent control from their hand. Uh, Electric Jellyfish, one of the most important cards in the deck. I have no idea why this card is only a normal monster. It should definitely be like a super rare. It's very good. It it, it puts Umi in the graveyard. It negates a spell or monster, and on top of that. And gain 600 attack on like in addition to that like it's such a good card and it special summons a, mo a water monster from the hand regardless of its level we play three copies of kairu shin this is like the heart and soul of the deck i was lucky enough to pull a royal rare uh, basically this is like a forced a forced there can only be one for your opponent as soon as it hits the field your opponent has to send everything that's not a water monster to the graveyard except for one monster and they can't go into any more monsters this is like without this card this deck would be probably unplayable it's the best card in the deck uh, one searchable Gamma Seal, you can search it off the Ice Barrier. Three copies of Foolish Burial Goods. I was actually playing something interesting with the Foolish Burial Goods before. I'll show you guys, but ultimately, in, in my build, it failed. I, maybe if you guys build it differently, it might not fail. This is kind of like a tech option here. Uh, where is it? It's another trap card. 
I was actually playing uh, this Crystal Beast card. Again, I don't know how I end up... Like, I pull... Every time I need a card slightly, I pull a Royal Rare of it. I was playing this card. So, basically, what this card does is you can banish this card from the graveyard and then add a Crystal Beast monster and a Field Spell. Any Field Spell in the game to your hand. And then you just search the Crystal Beast Turtle. So, basically, you just... You can use the effect of Foolish Burial Goods, send this to the graveyard, banish it, add the Turtle, plus you can add Legendary Ocean. It basically gave you more versatility, but my, my issue with it was you already, you played too many more bricks in a deck that can sometimes be bricky. Uh, so, I ultimately cut it. I used to play it, again, uh, I, I, was, I was... Instead of playing Ice Barrier, I cut one Ice Barrier, and I cut, like, Imperm, and I was playing the Turtle, and I was playing this card. And I would basically send this to the graveyard. Now the problem with that is Ice Barrier is actually pretty good even when you draw it in your opening hand. Whereas this thing does absolutely nothing if you draw it in your opening hand. It literally does absolutely nothing. Uh, it has some weird effect where uh, if your opponent, you and your opponent have level 10s, we, I don't play level 10. So it was just a completely dead card. Um, next we play 3 Pot of Extravagance, a control deck you gotta draw. Whatever gets banished, you just play with what, what doesn't, you know. Uh, pot of prosperity we play one of that because we can only play one three copies of fish sonar very good card uh, basically lets you uh, add any card that says umi in its text and then if you control legendary ocean or, or umi you get to uh, special summon a normal monster from the deck uh, then we play uh, three copies of legendary ocean got to max it out one copy of sea stealth counts as umi it also gives you targeting protection for monster effects only monster effects and then during the battle phase you can special at the beginning of the battle phase you can special summon a water monster that says umi in its text or a water normal monster from your graveyard or hand when you summon it uh, it gets destroyed during the end of the battle phase but what you can do and this is pretty cool is you can just activate sea stealth attack to banish whatever monster you summoned and then it won't get destroyed by sea stealth and then during the end phase it'll return uh with sea stealth one so you can use sea stealth one and sea stealth two pretty well together and it's, yeah they work uh, ice barrier we play two copies because sometimes you just you draw this and then you'll draw this and if you don't have this to send off of this then it's just a dead card completely so i i ended up playing two of them and sometimes like i said this effect's actually pretty good because it changes the monsters attack to zero and it negates their effects permanently so sometimes it's, it's actually good enough like your opponent will summon like a big monster and they'll try to attack over kairu shin and you just activate ice barrier make it zero and now their one out is gone one infinite and permanence i'll probably i would replace that with another trap but i don't even know what to replace it with three dark reef another really important card uh, uh two gozins three sea stealth and then two there can only be one yet another royal rare how i keep pulling them i don't know for the extra deck we play one white or a dolphin just in case we have legendary ocean our levels drop to three and this becomes three and all the level fours become three you can go into a white or a dolphin it basically just makes an opponent's monster cut by half and if this is destroyed you can bring it back if you banish a water white or a whale is really good he can attack twice he can do piercing he can end games he destroy he basically basically right is your opponent's board as soon as it's synchro summon dragite is a monster a spell and trap card negate i should say um uh, super quantum beast is pretty good he basically pops spell and trap cards uh with a water monster you make this any again level four plus another thing uh decent defense uh, and then, of course, you can go into other plays with it. You can go into Zeus, Abyss Dweller, just in case. Uh, or playing graveyard focused deck. Bagushka sometimes is worth it. Sea Stealth. I'm sorry, Steel, Stealth Kraken's pretty good. If you have, go if you draw a Gozen, sometimes Stealth Kraken is actually the best play that you can make. Like if you draw like a like a Jellyfish and a Warrior of Atlantis, for example, you draw these two. You activate Jellyfish, send the Legendary Ocean, summon Warrior of Atlantis. Uh, summon this and then all your opponent's monsters become water and you summon and you activate goes in match and you lock them into waters and they're playing like i don't know like zombies or something like it's just it, it, it's game over they can't really do anything uh so that is usually pretty good and then it floats into the crag and spawns which is pretty good i pulled these all out of the legacy pack so i didn't even have to like craft them uh, we play one zeus i've never gone into this i might replace it but this is lit i don't know what to even replace it in because it's like you go into your extra deck with this deck but not like a lot uh, one Miss Starboy just for extra attack power. One, one Marin says Coral Anemone. anemone. Uh, this card's pretty good because you can basically, like, let's say you have two Jellyfish. You could just link away the two Jellyfish and then special summon the Jellyfish back. And you basically get, like, kind of like a big attack boost for free. Um, and then, yeah, every single turn you can bring back a 1500 or lower Water Monster. And then we play the Water Charmer just in case we are playing in the mirror match or, or just playing against another water deck this can actually be pretty good and then we are playing the underworld goddess which can basically out any board your opponent has so if they have like 
a monster that's really really tough to get rid of which isn't like a huge problem for this deck because we can literally search a kaiju but let's say they are playing something that's very very tough to get rid of um yeah you can get rid of it it's almost like a guaranteed like it's like a card you definitely need to have in this in the, in the game in general uh but that is everything that we have uh, for this deck if you enjoy this deck profile definitely let me know and if you want to see any others uh thank you for watching la 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 la